the uh, Senator Cortez Mesta. Mm. Got the lottery here. How are you? I'm good, good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us, Commissioner. Always appreciate uh, your attendance in, in response to questions and calls as well. Let, let me talk to you about something that hasn't been discussed here, but it is important for many of us who are dealing with, unfortunately, uh, disasters in our communities and uh, governor declared disasters. This winter, Nevada has dealt with a series of, um, of severe storms at, which have resulted in major damage causing widespread flooding, rock slides, landslides. They have threatened communities and contributed to more than 10 million in damages to uh, our public infrastructure. The governor and our federal delegation have asked President Biden to issue a major disaster declaration. Uh, but I wanted to discuss how issues like this can impact tax filing. I have a bipartisan bill that would allow the IRS to delay the tax filing deadlines upon the written request of a governor when a disaster has been declared. It's very critical that we have this, um, what we are seeing, wildfires, uh, disasters happening, uh, and it has an impact, and I'm hearing from my constituents, unfortunately, who are dealing with these disasters, on their ability to try to file these taxes. So my question, I guess, commissioners, to you is, do you agree with the need to provide taxpayer flexibility in meeting that filing deadline when something like a natural disaster occurs? I do. I mean, we, we have a long history of extending deadline and creating flexibilities for individuals impacted by, by natural disasters. I think it's an important function for the IRS to not have a one-size-fits-all approach and assume every taxpayer is in the same situation. The, we appreciate having those tools. The final position the administration can offer on any bill is rest with the Treasury Department, but as a guiding principle, tools to help taxpayers in need are something that we're very interested in the IRS. Thank you. That's what I'm hearing from you today in your answers uh, to my colleagues' questions. Uh, let me jump to a separate subject. Immigrants face unique barriers um, to filing taxes. As a result, we have seen lower immigrant uptake rates of tax credits, such as the child tax credit, especially in Latino families. Um, two questions I have for you is what steps is the IRS taking to remove barriers to filing taxes and receiving tax credits? And currently, it is my understanding that the IRS does not allow um, ITIN applications to be processed electronically and requires that ITIN applicants file a tax return along with their application. And I guess my question to you is, would, would, would you consider eliminating these barriers for ITIN applicants? So two questions, if you would regarding the ITIN applications and how do we deal with these barriers uh, to filing taxes and receiving tax credits for some of uh, members of our immigrant communities who wants to file taxes? Yeah, I think it's been a theme of this hearing in terms of you know taxpayers that are eligible for, for benefits, uh, refunds, credits. You know, I, we recently announced publicly and we tried to make a, a lot of press about it that that come file because the statute of limitations on on your refunds are expiring we have a lot of unclaimed refunds people are who, who can file who can claim their refunds are not doing so and we want to make sure that we're paying people what they're owed so how do you reach out to those immigrant communities the latino communities who are paying taxes but uh, or want to pay their taxes like, yes but are, there's barriers to them maybe a, a language barrier yeah, we have to we have to do more with our stakeholders, the intermediaries. We have to work more in communities. I mean, Senator, earlier I was talking about one of the reasons why I'm excited about the Inflation Reduction Act plan that we issued is that it really does allow us to establish three very clear priorities. The first priority I listed was customer service. And that's not just about answering the phones. And it's not just about improving the call center, all of which are important. It's also about outreach. It's about better understanding taxpayers. They're a diverse group. They're not all in the same situation. Some are struggling because of a disaster. Some are struggling because of uh, they're acclimating to the United States in some way. And some are struggling because they financially can't afford to pay what they owe. And we want to get them on installment agreements and help them that way. We can do better in all of those outreach efforts. And, and I'm looking forward to working with the team at the IRS to do that. <laughs> Thank you. And then I know my time is up. Finally, um, in, in response to your conversation earlier with uh, Senator Johnson, um, as you provide that feedback and that information that, that he requested to the chair, um, can you distinguish between the two? You have auditors and you have investigators. You have criminal investigators that investigate for fraud, criminal fraud, 
And then you have auditors that are looking at um, the tax returns of individuals uh, and corporations. Can you, uh, when you provide that information, distinguish between the two? Yes. And would an individual receive um, outreach from an auditor if there is a technical question that auditor has about their tax return? Yes. Okay. So that could be separate from a criminal investigator that may be responding to uh, an investigation they're doing for criminal fraud, yes. correct? Yeah. And we try to be clear and we, could, we can ramp up our communication efforts on this. When you can expect to be contacted by the IRS. It can happen, and it typically happens because there are questions that we have about what you filed. It might be a criminal question, it might be just an audit question, but it does happen. And one of the things that I'm worried about is that we need to make clear that more often than not, if someone's telling you they're from the IRS, they're not, and it's a scam. So it's not easy to navigate, but we do need at times, and we're gonna try to be as transparent as possible, to reach out <coughs> to taxpayers. And I'm really committed to creating a culture in the IRS where when we're doing outreach, it's to help. This is this customer service time, point. Time of my colleagues Thank expired. You. Senator